Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. It is a gorgeous day here in Portland, Oregon. We just got home from a bike ride to our local dairy park. Now, I live in the Park Rose neighborhood. That's why my channel is called Park Rose Permaculture. It's in Northeast Portland. And this part of town used to be agricultural until, you know, probably 50, 80 years ago. My dad's house a block away from me used to be a cherry orchard. And our house used to have quite a bit more property and there was an orchard in the back. And the local dairy park, Sens Dairy Park, used to be a dairy. But now it is kind of a community hub where the local playground is there, the local community garden is there, and there's also a like a picnic area and it's ringed by a native's garden. And then there's a little section up by the street that has big boulders and rocks and lots of sun and it is planted with kind of a wildflower mix meadow pollinator garden. And while my boys were playing at the playground today, I walked over and checked out the plants growing there. And one of them is in full bloom. And I thought, this is the right time I need to talk with y'all about this plant because in my garden, I have this growing in a little bit of a shadier spot and it's not yet blooming, but it's a plant that I think, if you care about our pollinators, if you care about native bees, uh, you should make a spot for this in your garden. So the plant I'm talking about is Phacelia. So Phacelia is a genus of more than 200 flowering annual and perennial plants in the borage family. It is a plant that makes a great choice for the back of a rain garden or in a wildflower meadow. So Phacelia is called scorpion weed because it has the blossoms growing in a curl, much like comfrey blossoms and looks a little bit like a coiled scorpion's tail. The blossoms are really open with the anthers and pollen easily accessible, the nectar easily accessible. It is a plant that I have found that honeybees and bumblebees and solitary bees absolutely adore. They will visit it just endlessly and it blooms for a long period of time. Now, when growing the annual phacelias, you want to make sure that the species you are growing in your area is not considered invasive. Phacelia tanacetifolia is invasive in many places. However, what I have found in growing multiple annual and perennial species of phacelia is that it does self-sow pretty well, but not any more vigorously than calendula or borage or nigella or any of the other annual self-sowing garden flowering plants we all enjoy so much. I've also found it's very easy to pull it up if it comes up where you don't want it. So what does Phacelia need to grow? It needs full sun. It does very well in poor rocky clay uh, soil. It does very well in a rock garden or rain garden where you get extra reflective heat off of the rocks and gravel that help create a warm microclimate. I found that I grow it in my rain garden. I grow perennial and annual phacelia on the back side of my rain garden. So the inside of my rain garden has lots of water and consistent moisture throughout the year. The back side of the berm of the rain garden is where you want to grow plants that do well with low water and high sun. Phacelia is a great choice there. Now, the perennial phacelia, Phacelia californica, is one that you can grow here in Portland. However, if it is very cold and snowy in the winter, you may want to mulch it and cover it. I found I've lost some of my plants this past winter because we had quite a bit of snow. It does die back to the ground in winter and then comes up pretty early in the spring, actually, and then flowers in late June and July. The annual phacelias, you want to sow the seeds in late fall through late winter and even in very early spring in order to get blooms in late May through late June, depending on the species and depending on your climate. So I grow the annuals because I get the blooms late May through late June. I grow the perennial phacelia because then I get the blooms in late June, mid to late June through July. That way I have that consistent chain of lots of pollinator food in my garden. This is where I wanna take a moment to say that 
I know I talk a lot on this channel and on my Instagram and on my Patreon about planting for pollinators. As a permaculturist, as somebody who cares about my garden, and as a beekeeper, I care very much about native bees and bee habitat. It's really trendy right now to vilify the art and craft of beekeeping. It's really, really trendy to turn honeybees into a bad guy. Frequently, it is one study that is cited and there tends to be a dietary or political ideology that drives this argument that honeybees are bad and we need to get rid of them. This one study showed that honeybees and native bees compete for pollen and nectar sources. And therefore the conclusion is we should stop beekeeping and get rid of honeybees because they are depriving native bees of food. There's a whole lot of reasons that argument is real, real fallacious. But let me just say that the problem is people. The problem is that we have destroyed habitat we have deprived the native pollinators of forage, of sources of pollen and nectar. We have created monocultures of lawns, of soy fields, of almond groves that are devoid of food for our native pollinators. We have uh, created a situation in which there is a shortage of food. So in permaculture, we talk about pushing toward abundance. We talk about how there is no limit to abundance. We don't need to hamper ourselves by saying, this is the most we can get. So when you pre present an argument saying, there is X amount of forage for bees, honeybees and native bees compete for forage. Therefore, the solution is reduction, is reducing the number of bee species and eliminating honeybees. Permaculture would say, the solution is plant more forage, plant more flowers. We can plant for pollinator food sources so that instead of creating an antagonistic relationship where we say that um, we can support honeybees or native bees, human beings can undo the damage we have done by stripping locations of pollinator habitat and food sources and instead choose to plant flowers, flowers that bees like. And Phacelia is a flower that bumblebees and native solitary bees adore. They love it. They will just carpet my Phacelia here through May through the end of July. They are feasting on Phacelia. So if you're looking to diversify the amount of pollen and nectar sources for native bees, add Phacelia to your list. I want a nectar flow from January through December, I know I live in a mild climate, but I want to create as much of a diverse and abundant supply of food for my bees as I possibly can for my bees and for the wild bees in my ecosystem. So when you plant Phacelia, you are caring for our native bees. So when growing Phacelia as an annual, I do want to say if you're looking at it from a cottage garden flower border perspective, it gets a little ratty looking as it ages. So the, the blooms, much like a comfrey, they bloom out in a spiral. And as it gets down to the latter half of the spiral of blossoms opening, you find that the foliage looks pretty tatty. If you want to grow Phacelia in your flower border or in your rain garden in a sunny spot, consider planting it in a wildflower mix consider planting it with under plantings of plants that are just a little bit shorter. So the Phacelia blossoms are up here and that ratty looking foliage is covered by other shorter plants in bloom. And that way you create a nice stack and a nice visual appeal in your garden. And uh, you don't end up with that kind of scraggly look. I found that being an ambassador for permaculture, being an ambassador for creating habitat for our pollinators, um, 
is easier to do if your garden is pretty, <laughs> if it looks really good. If you can say, hey, you can also grow a wildflower garden and it looks really nice. So thinking about our design in terms of functionality of permaculture, but also thinking about our design in terms of aesthetic beauty and being an ambassador for sustainable agriculture and sustainable ways of living. So I hope that that helps you learn a little bit about bees friend slash scorpion weed slash phacelia. Think about whether you want to grow those perennial lower growing phacelias like phacelia californica or the taller airy breezy annual phacelias. Check and make sure that you don't have any restrictions on growing Phacelia tanacea folia or any of the other self sowers in your garden. Provide that food for our native pollinators, knowing that we as permaculturists, we as gardeners have the option to increase habitat, increase forage, plan for abundance and provide a safe haven for our pollinators where the landscapes around us may be monoculture lawn food deserts but we know in our garden we have a safe harbor where pollinators can thrive where we can help produce as much habitat and forage for them as possible so in doing that consider adding phacelia to your list so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can check out my Patreon in the description and consider subscribing. All of those things are ways you can help support me in making more videos for all of y'all. Also, if you have questions and comments, I try to get to all of them, but I have been getting so many more comments lately as I am pushing up on 10,000 subscribers that it's hard to answer everybody's questions, but please know that I read all of the comments. And if you make suggestions for future videos, I try to cover that topic whenever possible. So I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks.